hello one and all and welcome to dub talk i am stephanie slash lilac and stuff and this is a podcast where my good pals and i either talk about a recent dub announcement or tackle an old review of mine that recently got a dub today i am joined once again by zenith and fresh out of metrocon as of recording this episode hi um, guys i don't <laughs> have a voice anymore hi megan <laughs> If you thought I sounded like shit during the Noragami review, you have not heard anything. Oh, it's gonna be a, a hell of a episode, I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> today's dub announcement is another one hot off the heels of Akon. Don't you dare start that stupid joke again, Zenith, I will kill you. What stupid joke? <laughs> Nothing! Um, today we're gonna be talking about the heroic legend of Arslan. And it's going to be a little bit different for a uh, certain obsessive Tokyo Ghoul fangirl. Hey. Because uh, Megan actually hasn't really been following the show. Uh, I've been a little busy. <laughs> I've had three cons in three months. Yeah, so her predictions are based on a, a list that I gave her and just the images of what the characters look like. And Zenith, just like with Ultimate Otaku Teacher, he saw the first show episodes of the broadcast dub. And he's going to make guesses along the way. Although, so unlike last guess. time, I did not make it to the second episode. I oh, refused. God. Oh, no. Anyway, <laughs> you all know the drill by now. We're going to cover the announcement that we were given. Uh, full of predictions and such, and even more predictions, because... Oh, good lord, there's a lot that weren't even announced. Um, so... <laughs> a lot that I didn't even expect to be announced. Um, so let's start with... We're going with a triple whammy here. ADR director, assistant ADR director, and the script writer. So... <laughs> this is actually... For me, this is a very, very interesting one. Because my brain was trying to figure out who could possibly direct this show. And yet, who was also available to direct this show. <laughs> to be completely honest. With the director, my mind was trying to figure out who could direct it, but at the same time, who was available to direct it. Because before this huge Acon announcement for the f remainder broadcast dubs um, came up, we have, who do we have? We have McFarland on Blood Bowl K Battlefront, um, Jerry Jewell for Seraph, Todd Habercorn, Alex Von David, and you may as well throw Christopher Sabat in there for Yuki Nagato, and Joel McDonald and Afia Yu are still working on Assassination Classroom. So, I already know that that group of people was probably not going to be involved directing wise. That kind of did leave me with a few ideas. Um, I had three preferences for director. I had Sunny Strait, uh, Colleen Clunkenbeard, and Zach Bolton. But I primarily put Sunny and Colleen because last season they worked on fairly similar shows, that being Maria the Virgin Witch and um, Yon of the Dawn. So I felt like one of them could handle it. And then Zach Bolton, he's not the worst director, but he's also not the greatest, but I felt like he could handle this one. Um, I didn't know if anybody else had a preference in director. I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> I think I said I wanted Colleen to you, too. Yeah, I think you said that. Because Yon of the Dawn is a thing. Yeah, that. Yeah. More <laughs> fantasy things with royalty, but less dragons, unfortunately. And less cute, adorable Shina. Oh, Shina. <laughs> lovely, lovely Shina. <laughs> Run now, Zenith. Run. <laughs> Run before the fangirl starts. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get out of the room. Um, Skip and as... back to the men. <laughs> Where's Hardy when you need him? Where's Hardy's great big manly arms when you need them? <laughs> um, I know, we need to lay off him. He's starving. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> because he's totally Tequila Joseph in disguise. Um... <laughs> And as for writer, because obviously assistant ADR director could be anyone and everyone at this point, so I'm not even bothering with that. With, with script writer, I had two. One was correct, and the other was Patrick Seitz. Because, <laughs> again, Maria the Virgin Witch is the thing. 
and I felt that he did really good um, with similar material than with, to Arslan, so I felt like that would have been a good fit there. I don't know if anybody has script writing preferences. <laughs> no. Because I, I know some people are going blind on this one, so I'm curious to know what you guys are thinking. I have no idea. I literally watched the first episode after the announcement in the Japanese, and that was about it. Uh, the monkey <laughs> with the typewriter? Yes. That, <laughs> honestly, I hate this script. I really, really do. Uh, my oh. guess was actually a man just slowly turning into a raptor. Oh my god. Um, or the Ford <laughs> Raptors from Jurassic World. <laughs> or maybe as led, or maybe as led by Chris Pratt. Or maybe it's um Jerry Jewel's character from Seraph with the sniper rifle that shoots tigers. Tigers. <laughs> yes, that is apparently a thing in the show, and I just found out about it. Today. I'm. So, I don't care if that's spoilers or not. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, and I love it. <laughs> it is just a a fucking sniper rifle that shoots tigers. I am still waiting for the train wreck. We'll see how it goes. But, I'm um, waiting. Seraph is going to turn into the biggest, gayest train wreck we've ever watched. <laughs> it's gonna be wonderful. <laughs> I'm sorry, those animators aren't even fucking trying anymore. <laughs> They're done, and it still has another season in the fall to go, so we'll see how things go from there. Though this and weekend, via discussion, I did learn that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is the best vampire show I watch. Nice. <laughs> um, anyway, um, the ADR director... I'm very surprised by this. Christopher Bevins, the assistant ADR director, Jeremy Inman, and Megan. You know how Zenith doesn't like the script? Yeah, why? Bonnie Clunkenbeard is writing it. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> um, Zenith, just so you know, Bonnie Clunkenbeard, she normally <laughs> tends to try and make the script as faithful to the original as possible. That explains and, why it sounds like an almost literal translation. Right. Um, personally, because I really thought Bonnie would be the most capable to handle this, mostly because there's a lot of historical aspects to the show, historical and cultural, that if you were to try and take extreme liberties with it, with some of the other script writers that Funimation usually has, it probably wouldn't end up well. <laughs> At the same time, weird. while I, I do... I, I praise that she tried to keep it uh, very true to that time period. There were things that I noticed that were very off, especially like um, halfway through the first episode. Th this person was basically saying, oh, they're, they're letting a little kid that young go to war? And I'm like, it's medieval times. Of course they would. Well, yeah, I thought that was this... in the Japanese, too. Like... Yeah. Um, they. It, well, again, faithful adaptation. But you also gotta remember, it may be medieval times, but it's not exactly historically accurate. It's another... It's like, um... Kind of mm -hmm. like, I don't want to say a parallel world, but it's more fictitious rather than based in reality. Okay. Uh, because, it just... Because um, as, as far as I know of um, Legend of Arslan, it's originally based on a book series, I believe. Um, and it's... Like a book series and a legend of sorts, so it's not based in reality to begin with. Mm -hmm. so if that helps at all. Okay, that that does alleviate that line, but I still think the entire thing was stilted. It was very forced, and even though they had uh, good actors, uh, I even recognized one of them, and we'll get to that later. They had good yep. people behind it. It's just they had a very bad script to work with, and it just it felt like they weren't talking like real people. E even medieval speak can be manipulated to make it sound natural, and that just, it, it all felt, it, it felt like a, uh, an amateur hour theater company. Ouch. And as a theater Damn. major, holy crap. Um. <laughs> I remember, I remember someone saying on ANN, and um, the Maria, first episode of Maria was kind of like that. But I don't know. But Patrick, I think, wrote Maria, right? Patrick wrote Maria. Okay, so I don't know if it's, it's maybe like first episode jitters that they were like, okay, we don't know where this is going. And it's episode one, I, from what my, I remember, was kind of, it's just kind of a Twilight dragging Arslan through the city like a little asshole. Mm -hmm. God, I sound horrible. Um, 
Yes, May- you do. That, that's, <laughs> <My> guess- <laughs> that's what my guess is, that maybe they were like, okay, fuck, what do we do? Um, do we try to, like, take it out of there, or do we stay, like, completely literal? Because in most things, I, like, most things I've seen Bonnie write, it all takes place in contemporary day. Like, Death Parade, yeah, it takes place in the afterlife, but it's still in contemporary times. Noragami, bo- you can see, is another more contemporary example. It just has some cultural pieces in it. Yeah, that so... Where her would work a lot better compared to some other So I'm wondering if it is the time period or the first episode jitters. Well... It's like, okay, we don't know what we're doing. Like, just yet, we're, like, kind of getting introduced to this world. Right. But this isn't the first anime for it, because I believe there was an anime like back in the early 90s for it, too. Yeah, so, I believe there was an OVA series, technically, yeah. Um, but, Zenith, you didn't watch the second episode at all, or you got partway through it, just so I can... I did not see it at all. I, you didn't I, see it at all, okay. I'm sorry. I uh, I was watching it, and then, you know, I was trying to get through it, and it I kept stopping it, and I'm just like, I, I need to power through this. And I finished, and I'm just like, okay, E3 is going on right now, and I'm missing all of it. <laughs> and it, the, the, yeah, and I, I was missing it for uh, a horribly written script and a main character who I hate. Well, the, I'll admit the first episode isn't the strongest in the world. I feel like, because I've been watching the simulcast, and I feel like it at least starts to grow a little bit stronger throughout. Um, Scripting-wise, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, also, in terms of director, oh boy, I didn't expect, uh, Bevins to be taking this on, to be completely honest with you. I thought he was already directing something this season, but apparently I'm wrong. He's not. Um, because he did Yurikuma last season. Yep. He did Yurikuma, Arashi, he did, um, uh, Back Mongolian Chop Squad, Devil is a Part-Timer, Quite a bit. Uh, some Italia. Uh, da 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 da. Uh, Yomengand is another one he's done. He's done quite a few um, directing credits. But now it kind of makes this, along with like the three additional um, casts that were thrown together for the full announcement, it, it, it's really weird to me. I for sure thought because if it wasn't going to be Sunny or Colleen, I for sure thought it was going to be Zack. Zack's not directing anything this season, ironically enough. Because as after now that all those dubs um, are announced, again, McFarlane for BBB, Jerry for Seraph, Todd, Alex, and Chris on Yuki Nagato, Joel and Afia on Assassin's Classroom, and hell, Joel is at, for the time being letting Afia take over directing for the time, for right now. Um, for, Afia um... even... Yeah, because Afi even mentioned this. Yona, I have a feeling um, Colleen and Cl- Clifford are working on the first half. That would make sense as to why Colleen wouldn't be available at the time. Um, Sonny is doing Mikarag- Mikaraga School Suite. Um, Caitlin Glass is show by Rock, and Kyle Phillips is Ultimate Otaku Teacher. So yeah, Zach's not doing anything this season, which is very weird to me. I'm wondering um, if they're they're keeping him open for something in the summer that they might already have the license for. Because we are getting towards the end of spring. So right. the summer title, like, it's probably, the summer chart's probably out already. My and if they, if they plan on doing this again, because now I'm thinking, okay, while well, we're doing the last half of Seraph and BBB, what's going to come in to replace Assassination Class, or maybe he's going to be on that. Well, BBB, Seraph, and Assassination Classroom are going to end at the same time. Oh, so we'll have three new shows. That's right, duh. Yep. Um. And because uh, Yuki Nagato is 16 episodes, um, I, Otaku Teacher is two core, Arslan is two core. I don't know about Show by Rock or School Suite. I think Show point. by Rock is one core. Mm-hmm. Um, but it started later, so... Yeah. So... I don't know. My other suspicion is that Zack might be currently directing something that isn't a broadcast dub, and that it could be released sometime soon. My guess is, do you think, because I know they said they were going to release it later this year, is do you think he's directing Zankyo no Terror? It's a possibility, but for some reason, in my head, and I know there are a couple of people who listen to this podcast and they'll really appreciate this, 
I kind of think that Zack may be the director for Garo the Animation. Oh. That's my suspicion, because we haven't heard much about it. And, I mean, the thing is with um, Terran Resonance, it's supposedly coming... It's Speculation is that it's being released in the fall. They should have wrapped it up by now. Touche. So, I highly doubt that it could be him, unless they did it, before, like, months ago. So... I was thinking, like, maybe it's a show that hasn't, like, we heard anything about yet, in terms of release. So, Gara would be one. Barakamon, maybe, but I highly doubt that. Um, there's a few, but I feel like Gara would be the one that's more up Zack's alley, if anything. That's just my guess. But then, um, quickly, the assistant ADR director, um, Jeremy Inman. He has some directing credits. Most notably, uh, if Hardy were here, he, he would appreciate it, Desert Punk. <laughs> um, but he has a good amount of assisting credits, too. Aside from Arslan, he's also done Murder Princess, and, just for you, Megan, Black Cat. Um, yay! So, I mean, I don't know much about directing credits, really, for this person, because the things that he's been full-fledged director for, I haven't seen. <laughs> but he's done quite a bit of voice work, if that counts. <laughs> so, yay! There's that. Triple whammy. Done. Um, so, gonna go backwards in the actual casting, and there is one additional role that wasn't announced, but we did hear in the first episode, but we'll get to in a second. Because I feel like we need to talk about the narrator, first and foremost. This is the one I do know about. This is the only one you know about. Here's a fun question I'm gonna send to you two. Because the narrator does not have a physical appearance, what- you know those images I normally use for, like, the characters. What in the hell am I going to give the narrator? I'm curious. I Make it one of the birds. <laughs> one of the birds. <laughs> Make it one of Arslan talks. The entire story is just a recounting to the rest of the birds. <laughs> Through the eyes of another bird about the story of a little bitch named Arslan. I'm going to say the narrator <laughs> is the CGI <laughs> that's everywhere. <laughs> the CGI soldiers on horseback and all that shit. That, that opening was garish to watch. <laughs> to be fair, at least the CGI is less terrifying than the Sailor Moon Crystal CGI. Oh gosh. True, Those transformation but sequences. <laughs> at least Sailor Moon has a better script. Debatable in that I don't care for Sailor Moon very much. I have not finished Sailor Moon Crystal or the original Sailor Moon. I well, am behind. The first arc is good. <laughs> the second arc is kind of stupid because it, they, they keep the Rini subplot in. Ugh. Anyway. Never, Zenith. If you ever get the fa- uh, for chance to meet my my director on my other podcast, and you talk shit about the Prince Diamond Dark, she will try to murder you because Prince Diamond is her husband. Though I'm not dissing him. I'm dissing, I'm dissing Rini. PR. Oh, no one likes Rini. I think we all want to throw her into the sun with Aloise from Black Butler too. Because <laughs> the arc would be good if she wasn't a part of it, and there wasn't the incesty undertones that she wants her father. Who, for some reason, has a fucking puppet of himself. <laughs> Hooray. Anyway. <laughs> the narrator um, is Tuxedo Mask's puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Completely rendered in the CGI. Hi, I am, of, I am Puppet of Man. Of Arsland. Oh my god. <laughs> As uh, being told sa- by <laughs> one of Arsland's bird to its nest. Sailor Moonception. <laughs> You're gonna make me Photoshop something really, really fun. Up, aren't you? Yes, yes, I <laughs> yes, am. Yes, we are. Oh God! Um, and you, th- and Lila, and you thought the Seraph recording got dark. <laughs> Darkest well, sketch. We, Darkest. I don't sketch. know. We haven't gotten that deep yet, you know. So we'll see. Yeah, I haven't called anybody a pedophile this recording. <laughs> so I technically far. did. <laughs> oh wait, what? Rini. Oh yeah. No, you didn't call Rini. Wait. How is Rini a pedophile if her dad told us that? Tuxedo. Guys, guys rain it oh. in, rain it in. Rain it in. We're going off the rails here. Um, so I highly doubt anyone had any actual prediction for the narrator. Because why the hell would you announce a narrator for an announcement like this? Um, because the Illuminati? <laughs> yeah. So I, we may as well just get to it. Um, hi, Mike McFarland. You are a badass storyteller, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, so... It's weird because every time on this podcast, 
Mike McFarlane has come up, it's always been on a show that he's directed, and this is the first time we can't make a uh, McFarlane Illuminati joke, which is weird. Damn it. <laughs> My life is over. <laughs> Shit. Um, now what am I gonna fucking do? <laughs> and make shitty jokes about anime? <laughs> Damn. Anyway, um, Mike McFarlane, for those who may or may not know, um, he is Jean Kierstein from Attack on Titan. He is update for Blood Blood K Battlefront, by the way, Deldro Brody, which surprised the hell out of me. So the Illuminati did happen there, just not where I expected it to be. Um, <laughs> let's see, um, Desert Punk as well, uh, Dragon Ball Z, Full Metal Alchemist, because I totally finally started watching the 2003 version. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> and a very big variety of stuff. Uh, He's going on for a good amount of loop on the third films. He is in One Piece. Ta-da. Um, he's done quite a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, Zenith. You know Buggy the Clown, right? Yes, I am currently working on uh, getting my Buggy arc, uh, my Buggy arc history of One Piece stuff together. So yes, I'm very f intimately familiar with the clown. Well, say hello to Mike McFarlane, because that's who he plays. No joke. He probably he'd probably be a better voice actor than uh, the person who is saddled with Buggy in the Japanese dub. Uh, oh, it, it's actually rather glorious. Um, <laughs> in terms of the way you I've described you and Buggy the Clown, it was kind of like I just keep imagining you like getting in bed with Buggy the Clown, but I doubt you want that to happen. Um. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward silence. Oh. I've had a long weekend. I have yes, no idea you, where yes. I am again. <laughs> Is, you're sure you're in Florida still? Have Have you uh, not seen any Morgan and Morgan commercials in Publix recently? I've seen enough Publix. No Morgan and Morgan commercials. Unfortunately, I think he's finally gone. That man is terrifying. <laughs> okay. Um, For any of you who don't know, just look up when he was trying to get Prop Two passed in Florida. It was the scariest fucking thing on the planet. <laughs> anyway, um, in terms of McFarlane's narrating, I like it, honestly. <laughs> I honestly I've... think he's one of the more competent uh, actors here. He does a good job with narrating stuff about stuff, even though the weird... <laughs> the, the, the names of the places are very weird. Let's just they put it right there. They are very weird. It, it's, very, it's a very weird cultural thing, I think. Um, with that really said, <laughs> he, he does a, a good job. I don't think he's the best actor there, because we'll come to that. But, uh, <laughs> for the moment Hooray. that the, the opening was actually where I was just like, okay, this is going to be interesting, and then, then I heard the rest of it. That's your big gripe, is the goddamn script. <laughs> um, personally, because I did watch those two broadcast up episodes, um, I think I like it. It's definitely different for me to see um, Mike McFarlane go on a narrating role instead of just, like, a physical character. So, I think, personally, I think it's fine. That's just my opinion. <laughs> I have it's, no idea. Yeah, because you haven't watched the dub. But, um, <laughs> anyway. I feel like if I had, I would have recognized who everyone was and would have been like, okay, now this isn't as fun. Yeah. Now, if only uh, the entire list I gave you was announced or somewhere in there but it's not um moving on um how many people on that list weren't um uh, one two three and narrator makes four so um the next one to go to is one that wasn't on the official announcement however first episodes are a thing um and i know and i know i made predictions and i know i gave the list to megan so i know she does itoli the little... Star Boy! The guy I <laughs> wish was the main character. <laughs> the kid who drags Arslan around. Oh, you mean the actual the cool episode. one who actually understands that being a slave is a bad thing? And isn't a little bitch? <laughs> yes, the I kid, hate. The, I, I, I hate the kid Arslan. Does come back. The kid does come back. Equal but don't you want to be a slave? No! What is wrong with you? To Why fair, doesn't Arslan he want is... to be my slave? <laughs> To be fair, Arslan is very sheltered from everything. And to his parents fair. are dicks. dicks. That, that yes. I will give it that. To be fair. To his be parents, fair. His parents are like, by the way, slavery is cool, also we're going to ignore you. Yeah, basically. 
but... Not even Yona's dad sheltered her that much. I know. It's bad. Like, Personally, when you make when you make Yona pre-getting her hair chopped off look competent... Holy shit show. <laughs> anyway, I'm just gonna say that I feel that Arslan at least becomes a bit more competent later on. Um, maybe not as competent as Yona is by the end of the first season, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, so Itolai, Megan, what were you thinking for predictions? Because I know you had them. Um, my first prediction was Josh Grilly, the human man-child. <laughs> After Femt, is that why you give him that title? Oh no, you have not heard half the shift that happened at Omni, did you? Oh, Lord. <laughs> when Bryce Pappenbrook ran on stage, he yelled out quite loudly in the most girlish voice, my ovaries. <laughs> I think it was him, I couldn't tell. If that really was Josh... I wouldn't I'd... put it past Josh. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him, honestly. And, um, I think you had a second one, right? Who else do you think it is, Lilac? Gee, I wonder. Gee, Gee I wonder. I wonder. I wonder who I think the blo- who I think the cool one is. Oh, for those who may or may not know and are just listening to this podcast for the very first time. First of all, what is Meg- wrong with you? Why haven't you watched the other episodes? You mean listened? It's like... Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. Though, then again, Zenith shouldn't talk, because last I checked, he was going through every single video that's on my channel from the beginning and hasn't even reached the first Dub Talk episode. You have so... a lot of videos, okay? And I don't have a, a lot of time. Some of them aren't that long, though. But anyway, um, second, in case you did not know, and you've been living under a rock, Megan really likes Micah Solasad's work. Yes, I do. So, so, obviously, that's the second prediction. But, I hate to burst your bubble a little bit, Megan. That character is a, is female. Wait, what? <laughs> yes. What the fuck? Like, that was a girl? And she outshines yeah. the supposed main character. Good job, everyone. I, I love this show already. <laughs> that was a girl, but it was voiced by a dude in the Japanese, I think. Well, here's the thing, because um, I did look at Wikipedia when I was a little bit curious about, like, because I needed to spell freaking names. Um, the character is female, disguised as a male, so that way she can take be a part of the army and fight for her beliefs. <laughs> No joke. So I've been had. So with that reminder, ladies and gentlemen, Megan only saw images <laughs> and one episode of the simulcast. In so. which I thought a twelve was a boy. Wrong. So I'm not mad about <laughs> this. I'm mad at myself for being stupid. To go off of that, I had two predictions for Itolai. I had Brina Plenty and Lindsay Seidel because obviously they can be really good at voicing. Wait, 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 wait! You knew the entire time and you didn't think to tell me. I didn't know if you would go and do research or anything. So when you thought you could have said, "Hey, Megan, Etwell is a girl. Don't cast guys as it." We gotta make this episode fun somehow. <laughs> <laughs> My vengeance for Sarah. <laughs> Oh. You motherfucker. Oh, Hardy already felt the pain with Otaku teaching. Well, you're making him watch Legawi or some shit. School days, actually. I, I decided on school days. So you did take my advice to wound him mortally. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, Zenith, did you have any idea as to who it might be? Who, uh, the girl masquerading as a boy? Yeah. Um, yes, little blonde kid. If I had to make a prediction, um, not knowing it was a girl until now, I was going to say uh, the guy who played Scar from Full Metal Alchemist. Okay, oh, which one? Wait, well, hold on. There's two different ones. One did. One, there's one for the original and the original did Brotherhood. Oh God! And I just looked that up too. I forget the name. I'll probably put it up there later. <laughs> We're all wrong anyway. I know. Um, Ryan Ryan Reynolds, not the famous actor. <laughs> oh, I know um, who that is. Yep, Ryan Reynolds is moderately new, um, but she's been doing quite a bit. She was in Hitalia, right? Uh, yes, Latvia. That's w- good choice. Yeah, for me, like I kind of picked up on it because I just finished rewatching um, Red Data Girl, and she plays Wamia, so. Going between that and then I saw the first episode, I'm like, okay, this makes sense now. But, um, 
she has also done Spice and Wolf 2, uh, Estesia, Estesia of a Rogue Hero, whatever the hell that is. She's a major character in that, apparently. Um, Sankara Undying Love. Uh, yeah. And she has quite a few, um, uh, secondary or background roles, but, um, the ones at least that I just listed are, um, her major ones. Since it's only first episode that she comes in so far, because she does appear again, and she's how old is she at the time? Like, 11? You can't really make too much of a judgment call because it's a kid, and then the next time she comes in, she's like 14, 15 years old. So, there's a bit of an age gap, but so far, I think it's fine. She at least disguises herself as a boy rather well. <laughs> Personally, but that's just me. I'm still mad that I didn't know that was a girl. <laughs> I'm about to say, it's awkward silence, what happened? I, I, I mean, I can kind of see it looking back, but I mean, it. Arslan looks more like a girl than anything. <laughs> and Axe. Uh, he kind of does. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he is very femmy, and like the, the, the thing is, he's supposed to be this, like, pure of heart guy. They, they, they try to make him up to be this, like, super noble guy, and I'm just like, yes, but... At the same time, he's extremely, extremely frustratingly naive. And the, the fact that well, we, he tries we, to we reason can, with we... his kidnapper. <laughs> Please, oh, let me go! You would like being my slave! Yeah, again, th sh again, sheltered kid whose parents are assholes. Yes, but that, you know what? In, I, let me give you an example. Uh, remember uh, Ragyo Kiryuin's uh, two daughters? Oh, Jesus Christ, I just finished that. I'm still traumatized. Uh, so, you just now spoiled Kill the Kill. Thank you for doing that. For people who haven't watched Kill the Kill. Oh, we can, which is we, probably some we, people. We can, we can edit that out. Let me rephrase that, okay? Or, or as long as you don't say names, that could work too. Um, how about this? Uh, remember re uh, yeah. Remember Satsuki Kiryuin? And how, uh, you know... Her whole plot line is that she's super, super strong because she has horrible parents. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That's, I'm still mortified oh, yeah. by that the, show. The, 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 there's a way of going <laughs> about it, and I know I know everyone's different. People deal with things in different right. ways, but it's, it's very frustrating to me to have a character like this. Uh, I can understand it, but... I am such a different person that to me it's 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 frustrating. But then again, we're talking about the wrong person. <laughs> we're we're not talking about Arslan yet. We're jumping the gun here. Um, we're talking <laughs> about the good character. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably a good time as any to move on. Um, so looking at the announcement again, I'm putting the next three together because they are th three generals that pop in. Um. Farhit, um, Kishwad, and Karlan. They are three generals under um, King Andragoras III. King Dickbag. Um, and Farhit is um, the uncle of Daryun, if I remember correctly. And so, these three I didn't expect to be announced, though considering the events of the show, one of them I should have guessed um, would be announced. Um, so I didn't have any predictions for it. I know probably Megan didn't because I gave her a list and they were not on there. Um, but Zenith, did you have any guesses as to who these three might be? <laughs> um, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs> Good enough. Um, um my <laughs> guesses are, my guesses are sad crying noises. Uh, Larry, Moe, and Curly. Sad I crying know. noises because the lightning just lost. Aww. Next year, damn it. Next year's our year. <laughs> anyway, um, so the people who are voicing these characters Varhit is Cole Brown, Kishward is Jared Green, and Carlon should have expected this Kent Williams. What kind of name is Kishward? I, heard, I first heard that. I'm like, what the hell did a five year old write this? <laughs> I have no clue. But, um,. Anyway, in terms of just roles to get at least a little familiar, for Cole Brown, um, he is the narrator of Desert Punk. He is, let's, <laughs> did the narrator for Yeoman Gund. A lot of narrating. Um, he is Marshall D. Teach, aka Blackbeard from One Piece. Um, 
as well yeah, as Blackbeard. Car- Blackbeard showing up in this. Why? Why? It, to make you well, cry. <laughs> and he's the nice old man too that teaches Arslan how to not be a pussy. So it's weird. I know. He, oh um, yeah, he he old- was the 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 old man, and I'm just like. He didn't sound familiar, but he had a very stereotypical old man voice, and you know what? Come to think of it, I think he knew what he was working with and just stopped caring. Because I, I, I think a lot of... Uh, he he has done better than this, and... Well, if, if it makes you feel better, because this isn't exactly a spoiler, because by episode four, Varhit is dead. Um, bye bye so, if it makes you feel better, I can understand that. But, um, yeah, I think it, it works, honestly. Um, Jared Green, somewhat new? Um, out of, between the three of them, he hasn't, he has the least amount of credits. Um, major roles can include, um, Tsukishima from Guilty Crown, um, Sato from Level E, uh, Hidaka from Robotics Note, um, Reiji Kagami from Tokyo Ravens, and Coco from Toriko, as well as several other small and background characters. Um, can and I mention that it makes me, when you said the name Tsukushima, I was like, ooh, Haikyuu, and then I remembered. And, and then you remembered. Sentai. Sentai. Fuck you, Sentai. sentai. I, must call, um, I must just called them Hentai Filmworks. <laughs> great. Um... Kishwar only had, like, what, one, maybe two lines that entire first episode. But he also and has the did... stupidest name. Yeah. And he doesn't say anything in the second episode, actually. So, not a lot to go on um, with that. As for Kent Williams as Carlon, he's probably the one with the most extensive resume out of the three. So... Just oh gonna Lord. just to bring up the running joke, fuck you, detective man. <laughs> Death Parade, yay. Um, there's also, let's see. Oh, where am I? Um, there's also Rekka 7AO. There's, uh, there's the Evangelion films that he's done. He's it, he's Hattori Soma in Fruit Basket. Ken, wait, that um, was him? That was Ken Williams. Balls, I have not watched that dog in a long time. <laughs> I know, we've, I rewatched it recently. <laughs> he's also done... He's also done Nabari no O. Uh, Nobunaga is a recent one. He's Captain Kuro from One Piece. Yes, okay. Captain Kuro. All of the Kuro. I love Captain Kuro. Um, Kuro Neko yeah, Pen he, he, Pirates. <laughs> he's also done Slater, Space Dandy. Um, he, he's, he has a pretty extensive resume. And considering from what I know about the character, and I don't exactly want to spoil what happens specifically with this character. It works, personally, to me. Question, does he become an asshole? Bottom line, yes. Fuck you, detective man! <laughs> Knew you would appreciate that. Um, bottom line, yeah, he kind of does become an asshole. In, 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 in kind of an interesting way. So, uh, <laughs> I think we're good. And I hear my cat meowing out the door again. I am not letting him in. <laughs> By the way, I am living at my parents' house right now, and we have cats, so <laughs> they are noxious as hell. Um, anyway. Try having move- six! <laughs> Hooray! Are we good to move on, I guess, from these three, unless people have more comments? I, I'm good to move on. All I'll say is that Blackbeard, come on. You have two devil fruits. <laughs> you have two devil fruits, and you, you're in this. And you're teaching this little bitch how to fight. Yes, and and and, and doing it, uh, you're actively showing him Enabling. up. Enabling. You're you're showing him up, and you could just let him win, but. Okay, <laughs> okay, so let's have some fun and talk about Arslan's asshole of parents, uh, King Angdragoras the Third and Queen Tahamine. If I King I Dick and Queen name. Bitch, basically. Um, and at least we have predictions for these ones. Um, Megan, what were you thinking for our lovely queen, bitch? Uh, Who Col- is not Irina. I, oh my god, I just realized the stupid typo I made on this. 
Apparently, I would love for the lovely voice actress Colleen Clinkin Bear. <laughs> Clinkin Bear. 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 Clinkin Bear. Is, is 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 she related to Kyle Hay Bear? Ah. Uh, okay. No lie. I saw Jurassic World on Thursday, and I swear to God, I saw Kyle Hay Bear in there at one point. Oh my God. Nice. I was like, wait a second. I leaned over to my friend because. I was there with like a bunch of my friends. We had gone from the con because the con started on Thursday. So we went over to another part of Tampa called Ivor City and went to go to the theaters in which I lied and cried my way into a sold out show. And nice. I leaned over to one of them. I'm like, Kyle, is that Kyle Haybear? And he goes, I don't know, Megan. Also, at one point, he leaned over and said to me, I think the T-Rex has a stand. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shit anyway. got weird. Uh, so Colleen Cookenbeard so, or yeah, Lydia so McKay? Colleen or... Okay, so Colleen or Lydia, I had Anastasia, Anastasia Munoz as my second choice because my first choice was actually right. Bitch. And I'll get to that in a second. As for King Andragor as the third, I could not think of a damn person who could come, who could handle this. I have a prediction. <laughs> you have a shut. Up. <laughs> um, I know Megan has predictions. I'm wondering if she's gonna realize something about them though. I know one of them is wrong now, and I know the other one is right. Yep. Um, so the wrong one... What was your wrong one? Just My wrong so one know. was, fuck you, Detective Man himself, <laughs> Ken Williams. Okay. I so, really want him to find that out, and please let that be his title. Okay, so... Since Zenith is so sure he knows who uh, Andragoras III is, will you please tell us who you're thinking? I'm hoping I get the name right, but Christopher Sabat? Chris Sabat. Christopher Sabat. Sabat. Christopher Sabat, who is Andragoras the Third. Yes. Yes. I. And I knew at the moment I heard Zoro because motherfucking badass Zoro. It makes sense. I'm like, who the hell's gonna do it? I'm like, okay, Christopher Sabat. Why didn't I think of this? And as for Queen Tahamine, um, the one I got right, Stephanie Young. Fuck! I knew I should have put her. I knew I should have put her, and I didn't. And, uh, for me, I, I actually... that That's Nico Robin right there for you, by the way. There's three One Piece voice actors in this, and the, the three best voice actors in this entire mess... Technically, there's four voice actors from One Piece in here. Because I don't think you're counting Mike McFarlane. Who is he? So wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that Z Zoro and Nico Robin was... are, making ug are bumping uglies. Uh... <laughs> Oh my god. No, that, that is not canon. That, and you know it. That is not canon. It is in this show. Canon. But anyway, oh. uh, like, seriously, these are the good voice actors. And Chris Sabat, everything he has ever said in voice acting has been superb in my eyes. And to hear his voice coming out of that king, like, I didn't hear it at first because that initial line where he meets his son is so stupid and so weirdly edited together that I didn't notice it at first but then I heard him the second time and wait a second that's Zoro that, that, that's motherfucking Zoro yeah because um I knew the cast list before going into the broadcast dub and I heard it I was like I think this works because again Andragoras was the one that I couldn't come up with anything for so I had no clue who would be capable of playing that kind of character and when I saw it I was like Okay, let's let Sabbath do it. I'm, he looked I'm big and angry, so I was like, he should be Chris Sabbath. <laughs> Chris Sabbath was big, angry people. And the, and then with um Stephanie Young and Tahamine, I had her in two different places with Tahamine as one. And just when I saw the character and how she portrays herself, she Stephanie Young was the first person I thought of in my head that could potentially voice that character. So, yeah. <laughs> I feel like... Yeah, there's not much else to talk about on that one, so... Um... So, do we want to move on? Because we have two more left, and then a bunch of characters that weren't even announced, I do so. want to say something, though. Go ahead. Has Zenith seen the clip in Yona? Where Hawk licks Yona's hand yet? Oh, God. I have not seen Yona at you all. You need to go watch it. No, you just um, need to go watch that part in English. Just, I'm not yeah. telling you anything else other than you need to go watch it in English. Lilac, don't say oh, anything. Gosh. Where would I find this? <laughs> I don't remember which episode it is. I want to say it's like Because I'm, I'm assuming you have a, um, a lead subscription with Funimation. So it's probably... It's during the second half. I think it's like... Uh, it's somewhere... I think it's in like... I think it's like 19 or 20. It's, it's either between 18 and 20. 
That's what I think. It shows so like what, it's... 22 episodes? 24. 24. At least for now. Man, the fight still waiting 20... for still waiting for that second season, by the way. Studio Pro. Yeah, I think it's 20. Yeah, Studio Pro's basically like, do we fuck with the Tokyo Ghoul fan base more or do we give the Yona fan base something? Let's just Can keep we... hurting the Tokyo Ghoul fan base. <sighs> so, um, I guess it's a pretty good time to move on to, uh, do we want to move on to Daryun? Yes! Daryun! Daryun! Very interesting. Um, who, I, I would probably consider him as the other major character alongside Arzun, all things considered. So I had two predictions. Megan had, like, three? One of which I'm like, was that a typo? Or... <laughs> can, can you tell us what you had, my dear? Um... Chris Rogers, because I don't know how to spell. <laughs> who the fuck is Chris Rogers? Chris I thought it was the guy who... What's the, uh, the guy who plays Karasuma? Chris Evans? That's Chris Ryan. No, that's Chris Ryan, dude, my dear. That's Chris Ryan. Oh, that's his name. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Chris, okay, Chris okay, Helmsworth? Okay, Jimmy, Yes. <laughs> you gave us another Chris too as a prediction, so and so did I, technically. So, because uh, I don't know where the I, fuck Rogers came from. I don't know either. Um, we have another Chris too. Chris did not. Sabbath hanging out there. And what was your other one? Because that third one was rather interesting too, by the way. Bill Parsons because Blood Blockade Battlefront's a thing, and I finally saw the chess episode. Yes. <laughs> It, it, oh, it's wonderful. Um, for me, alongside Chris Sabat, because he was my second pick, I put Robert McCollum in there as my first choice. Based on what you've heard, what do you think it is, Zenith? Hmm. It's a tough one, I will say that much, and for good reason. I'm going to say the Black Ranger and Power Rangers. I cannot remember his name. Johnny Young Bosch? You? Yes. Must say, your friend is Johnny Young Bosch? Yes, Johnny Young Bosch, because I can never remember his name, and I know I'm completely wrong, but that's... I would like to hear that. Oh, wait, so this means that Daryun is Micah. Daryun is not Micah, my dear. Damn it! N nor is he Johnny Young Bosch. Rico Fajador. Who? He's a Tona? He's Etona From Assassination Classroom. What? <laughs> yeah, and it sounds very interesting, actually. Um, Does he at least sound sexy? I think it works, because, I mean, it, for people who don't know who uh, Rigo Fajador is, if I, I'm probably mispronouncing the name, I apologize. Um, Are you sure it's not Rico fair. Suave? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anymore, okay? Um, he has quite a few roles, he has a few roles, mostly background <laughs> characters, um, Shut up. <laughs> and but ma but major role wise, absolute duo. Arya the Scarlet Ammo, as just mentioned, um, he's Ituna from Assassination Classroom. Um, he's in Show by Rock actually, and We Without Wings Under the Innocent Sky. He that's another major role. All the other ones that are listed are minor or secondary characters. I legit so. saw a Show by Rock cosplay this weekend. I was amazed. <laughs> but yeah. For me, because I saw the two episodes, it's not what I expected, obviously, but it works. It, when I was watching, because I was watching the second episode today of the dub, the vo the voice slightly reminds me of a more soft-spoken Robert McCollum, to me, how he's doing it. So, I'm okay with that, honestly. That's just me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm okay with this. But, yay! <laughs> this is the quietest podcast episode I have ever heard I, in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on! And I'm still trying to contemplate why four people from One Piece, one of my favorite <laughs> animes of all time... Is in the show. Are, ...are slumming it in the show. And, you know, I, I didn't watch that much of the Funimation dub... Um, un except for, like, the parts that aired after Four Kids messed up the series. Uh, but they did a great right. job. They, they, they're really good, and I, I, I can't believe it. 
I don't think four kids messed up One Piece. I think four kids dragged One Piece into a back alley, beat it with a baseball bat, and left it for dead. Oh, yes, yes. Fuck with a lollipop. There's a reason that's, I try not to talk accurate. about it that much, but... Uh, it's like the dark it, days. Shameless accurate. plug, watch History of One Piece. Uh, yeah, just, just look up History of One Piece. You'll figure out what I do. Yeah. Um, so, why don't we talk about uh, Prince Arslan, then? Prince a little bitch? Uh, Prince, yes. I'm going to try to go to the person, the, the people that we just enslaved, that we just killed hundreds of thousands of them, and I'm going to tell, a, ask them to a, answer my questions about their culture, and then get shocked because they assaulted me. Like, what the, What? At least he's moderately curious about them and is not an asshole. He, he to them. except so for he's saying he's for him to he's, stop slavery. By the way, there's potential, but at the same time, he's just like, why don't you be my slave? Why don't you like being a slave? Any sane person, if they are pure of heart, it, or if they're not pure of heart, any sane person can look at a slave and see that's why they are running away because they don't like being treated like shit. I mean, once you get past the first episode, it. <laughs> Arslan becomes a bit more competent. And um, there is a character in particular that comes in that kind of helps a lot more in changing his viewpoint. So, I th it, personally, I think it gets better. But, I mean, to, their own. Uh, to be fair, I know that he ages after this episode because they do have that yes. thing at the end with more CGI. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! This the, the show is CGI, bad script, and a, and a guy being a wimpy kid. But it gets better. And, uh, it, it, because he actually grows up. And uh, I really, what I think would have helped it is if this episode had been cut in half and they had that time skip. And then a lot of it was him reminiscing and being like, man, I was kind of an idiot. Well, he kind of has that moment a little bit later on because. Oh, well, thank God. As, as I've mentioned this, he does meet Itola again. So. And when he meets, um, when he meets her, does he, is he like, oh shit, it's a girl? He doesn't know it yet. Um, I don't think at this point anyone knows it. The only reason I do is because I did research. So, <laughs> oh, so we might not. We might want to mention spoilers then. <laughs> well, considering what I did for predictions, and considering who got cast, it's not going to make much of a difference. Okay. Anyway, um, predictions for Arslan, Megan. I had Todd uh, Habercorn or the great. Lord of the Omni Expo meme itself, Austin Tyndall. Oh my god. <laughs> um, and if you ever want to see an explanation of that, just look up Attack on Titan cast attempts to sing the opening, and you will learn what the Austin Tyndall joke is. Oh my god. Um, that poor, poor bastard. Poor, poor bastard. Um, so, with my predictions, funny story. Um, Megan, you know your predictions for Itola, right? You used those were your my predictions for Itola were your predictions for Arslan, weren't they? Yes, they were. Josh Greeley and Mike Solis. I am rubbing off on you. Well, the thing is, with because Arslan does is rather soft spoken. Josh obviously was first like to come to mind, but then um, because Arslan say you. Is also Su Won from Yona the Dawn, hence why Micah comes in here. Su well. Hans. <laughs> you fucking hate that guy. Um, I want to punch him in the dick. His <laughs> tiny little dick. <laughs> um, Zenith, who does Arslan sound like to you? You know what? I, I don't care what he sounds like. He's Shinji fucking Inkari. He's Spike Spencer. Oh my god. <laughs> Is it really Spike Spencer? No, it's no, not. It, no, it's not. But <laughs> it makes it so much better. Um, so Megan. Get into the goddamn army, Sarsland! <laughs> no, 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 Megan. Do you remember what no one ever expects? The Spanish Inquisition? <laughs> yeah, so what does no one expect? Dragon Age Inquisition? No. Oh god, <laughs> no, is it? No! Nobody is it is is it No. no. No, n n no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Aaron Dismute Mugen Inquisition. Inquisition. <laughs> it's Aaron Not Dismute. again! Not again! <laughs> it's Aaron Dismute. Dismute, you little shit! 
<laughs> you Teletubby fucking little shit! <laughs> It's funny because the thing I noticed, um. Why? First of all, Cat needs to shut the hell up out there. Um, second. <laughs> Maybe it's to... saying the same thing about you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> God, human, um, shut the fuck up! <laughs> um, but. Mother um, the other The other thing I kind of noticed, and I was thinking about today when I watched the second episode. You know, Megan, how Austin Tyndall kind of got quite a few decent roles last season. Is this the season of Aaron? That's what I'm thinking, because Austin, I mean, Tokyo Ghoul, Assassination Classroom, Maria the Virgin Witch, and now we have Aaron with not only Arslan, but Blood Blood K Battlefront. So, <laughs> it's really interesting. By the way, Aaron Dismuke, um, done a, quite a bit, has been around since he was a kid, <laughs> um, Small notably time. though, most notably though, uh, Alphonse Elric from the original Full Metal Alchemist. In which he was actually a small child. Yep. Um, but in terms of more recent stuff, uh, Leonardo Watch from Blood Blood K Battlefront. So, for me it's... I'm trying to get used to it. I think for me, it's, out of all of the characters that were announced and I was listening to and paying attention to, Dismuke was the weakest out of the group. I would think he would be because Arsland is like what twelve when the series starts. Actually, oh, no, he's yes. he's uh, eleven because he's in battles at fourteen. Yeah, yes. so I'm like, I get, I get. Not all of the actors are gonna they're gonna cast for obviously eleven year old children, but right, at least but a lot of them can fake it pretty decently. But you also gotta remember, I saw the first and second episode, the broadcast dub. And in the second episode, he is that 14-year-old version of Arthur. And it's still really weak. It's gonna take some adjusting. Because the thing like, is that he's he works as Leo and Yeah, it, I, I'm starting to get on the air, get on the Disney nuke train with um, Leo for Blood Bucket okay, Battlefront. It could happen here again with Arslan. I just don't know yet. I think the thing I'm noticing with Aaron characters is that if they scream a lot, like Leo screams and bitches a lot. Like different bitches <laughs> than really Arslan does. bitch. Like he really does. <laughs> in in The Devil is a Part Timer, the way that Lucifer kind of screams is and gets annoyed is different and he works a lot better when he gets to be kind of snarky. And mm -hmm. Arslan is basically dumb as a pile of rocks. Pretty much anyway. He's a he's a <laughs> sheltered bag start. of rocks. At least at the start he is, yes. Right now he's kind of a sheltered bag of rocks, so... <laughs> um, what say you, Sir Zenith, in the corner? Because I know you have your huge gripes about Arslan and the script and uh... all that kind of stuff. But, but in terms of Dismuke and how, what he did with Arslan so far... I just think it's stilted. He definitely has some chops, but the thing is, I think him plus the script... He, it just doesn't work. He's he's trying too much to sound like he's formal, but then he slips into his like uh, his civilian dialect, and it just doesn't work. And I mean, I like that he's a little bit happy-go-lucky, but half the time I can't take what he's saying seriously because he's trying to say all these big, fancy, eloquent speeches and say, "Oh, let's go tomorrow," and blah blah blah. When he's a kid, even if he were in those times, I don't think he would speak like that. Even as, in terms of the character, in terms of the character, I don't think that character would would act like that. Especially, what doesn't work is his interaction with his mother and his interaction with his father. The way he takes everything, he doesn't act like, oh, my mother is kind of, like, he doesn't, act shocked that his mother acts that way and he doesn't act mad he's just saying okay he he's just doubting himself and then he sees his father what? and his his father's a douche to him and he doesn't do anything well again arslan has grown up with this so i feel like for him he more internalizes everything you don't exactly see him like put himself out there which obviously makes it difficult but with the high expectations especially that his father puts on him 
he's like he's still trying to impress his father and try to gain some respect and admiration that he's never I, gotten from his family. I, I think he's just trying to like mm-hmm. I think it's it is what Lilac says and I think that he doesn't know any better because right. he's also an only child and usually when you're an only child because I'm one too you tend to not realize how your parents treat you until other people come into the situation. Mm. Mm. I mean, it just, if it were me and my, and you know, I came and said, oh, I'm glad you're right, father. And he's just like, there's no need, blah, 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 blah. I would maybe frown a little. Well, Andragoras III is a punk- power hungry asshole, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he's a power hungry asshole I'm, with like a legendary background. I mean, I can like, really. The only, the only, like, the only person he moderately cares about is his wife. And she doesn't give a shit about him anyway. She, she doesn't give a shit about anyone. And I I definitely can understand where you're coming from with the whole, like, internalizing it stuff. And I just would have, like, more visible cues. Mm-hmm. Or maybe an internal thought thing or whatever about how he's dealing with this. Or maybe have us not meet them at that point in time. I mean... Not not just as part of the dub, but in terms of sub two, you could have introduced them beforehand, showcase their relationship, and then go to him coming home from war, and maybe give it a little bit more character with them. As it stands, I felt there was too many uh, characters being introduced at the same time, and I had trouble keeping track of like the generals and. Oh, believe me, those generals don't really matter except for Carlon. Mm-hmm. After that first episode. What about Daryun? Um, Daryun does matter. Um, because you have not seen the second episode, you are not aware... <sighs> I may as well just say it. It's not really even a spoiler. Carlon turns traitor and helps Does that the... mean Carlon's another character that I might have predicted under another name? Uh, no. Two different characters. Okay. Because I think I know what you're referring to. Um, no. Carlon, um, he turns traitor and helps... Um, the Lusitania and basically causes a lot of problems. So, mm. so he uh, so with the battle that Arslan Mar- Arslan's made in battle, traitors things happen, and Arslan kind of becomes separated from everyone else. Um, him and Daryun. So, and then from there, like I I know I'm saying a lot of stuff, but at least it's in the first four to five episodes. Um, the king is, uh, taken prisoner by, uh, Lusitania. Good. And, um... Suffer! Ar- and Arslan kind of, Arslan and Daryun kind of start going off on their own to try and find people that could help them, um, take back the kingdom and everything from Lusitania. Question, does his mom bite it? Mom does not bite it. Does the mom turn traitor, too? Mom does not turn traitor, so far, anyway. Oh god, but... please don't tell me they're taking his mom with them. I want her to die. No, she's still she's still at uh still at the capital. But uh anyway. you know, what happens. So. Anyway. I just wanted to let you know there are there is more to it. And again, this is one of the situations where if you get past the first episode and you kind of start the second episode really kind of starts picking up a lot more. Yeah. Of the, of the actual meat and potatoes. So yeah. well, I, I I think you're right. It could have done better starting off at a different point. But at least for the sake of like establishing like characters and the world, I, I, I think it was at least a necessary evil. I think it has the opposite problem of Ultimate Otaku Teacher, where Ultimate Otaku Teacher kind of gets off to a rough start, but the second half is really, really great in that first episode. Here, it gets even even though for some reason people don't like Otaku. Teacher. Yeah, but anyway, in my opinion, but. This episode starts off interesting and goes nowhere, to me, and and it just yeah. kind of goes downhill. And if if it had flip flopped that, then maybe I wouldn't be so keen to go towards it. But the thing is, Ultimate Otaku Teacher. While I didn't like some of it uh, in terms of the dub work, I think it has a much better script and I think it has a more competent voice acting. And I don't want to see Christopher Sabat in this dub anymore. <laughs> No. Well, if you de- if you if you decide to at least give it another chance, um, the second episode, there's quite a bit of build up, but there is at least a good payoff at the end of that episode, because that end of that episode, that cliffhanger moment is pretty much like, hey, Carlon has turned traitor, so 
it does it does start progressing a lot more after that first episode. But for the sake of establishing characters in the world, it's a necessary evil that first episode, unfortunately. Um, but more so, predictions. <laughs> more predictions, because uh, the list I gave Megan, there's still five, five rather important ones that haven't been announced yet. Um, and all of them are actually in the opening theme. So <laughs> one of them being one of them being as voiced by God. I'm like looking at the Japanese cast for all of these characters, and I'm like, I love every single one of these actors in some way, shape, and form. Mm-hmm. So let's start with. I'm gonna put these two. You can. We can probably put most of them together. Narciss and uh, Elam, because the two of them do come in at the same time. Actually, I'm just gonna preface um, this right now. I. F- Fucking love Elam Seiyu. Um, <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Starts with a T, ends with an Okio ghoul. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, Nar. For the Nar- reference, Elam is voiced by the same guy who plays Kaneki, and I love Kaneki Ken. So. I love <laughs> Tokyo Ghoul in general, but that's not for this time. Yeah, I was about to say, you guys can have a long ass conversation some other time. But, um, Nar- Narciss, um, just for establishing who he is, um, you you might remember the friend of Daryun, um, who he mentions at the end of the first episode that he that Arzan should talk to at some point if he ever becomes king. You remember that? Oh, okay, that guy, the guy, the guy who's played by Namikawa, and I couldn't. That's the one I couldn't predict because I couldn't find a picture of him. Oh no, that's not the one I couldn't predict. I was about to say no, you gave me a prediction for that one. Oh okay, yeah, <laughs> I did give. Oh yeah, I have but, one singular prediction. Yeah, um, Narciss is um, a strategist who was exiled um, because he believes that slaves should be free. So, as you can tell, that's gonna. As you can tell, he is one of the major influences um, on Arslan when they meet. Elam is basically the person who, I guess you can say, quote unquote, serves him, but out of his own free will, um, because of what Narcissus had done for him and his family. And he's basically the equivalent of Yon of the Dawn's Yun, in a sense. So, uh, prediction wise, I had two for Elam, but I had four for Narcissus. Jesus Christ! Three of them are obvious. One of them I decided to go a little out of the box with, though. So I'll and say I, my, my prediction for Narcissus was a single person. I predicted J. Michael Tatum. Tatum is one of mine. Um, <laughs> my other three, though, this is the order I put them in. I put Eric Vale, Ian Sinclair, J. Michael Tatum, and my out-of-the-box one, Alex Organ. Oh, Alex Organ. Wonderful, wonderful Deckham oh. from Death Parade. <laughs> Fuck you for making me cry, you little bitch. As well as fuck you, Makashima from Psychopaths. Um, but the first three were obvious, like stereotypical ones. Um, with Eric Vale, especially, just the personality is rather similar to Sanji from One Piece, um, Narcissus' character. And so I was like, okay, we can do that. But then, like, Ian and Tatum can obviously pull that off too. Alex, I wanted to see him do something a little bit different. Because um, I've only seen him as Makashima from Psychopaths, as Deckham from Death Parade, and as Togusa for Ghost in the Shell Rise. He is the successor to Crispin Freeman's Togusa. So I wanted to see something a little bit different for him. And I felt like he could probably pull that off. Um, <laughs> Elam, on the other hand, because Elam is basically Arslan version of Yoon, I obviously put Clifford Chapin in there. So <laughs> did I. Yup. Um, my second one, though, I went with Austin Tyndall. Austin? Oh god, no, I'm not doing that. I can't do that with my voice right now. Don't do that again. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Preserve your voice. <laughs> Jesus. Because I feel like... I feel like it's something that he could pull off. And it, it, it's, it could work similar to Maria's Joseph. It's not a Kaneki. It's not... It definitely... Hell no, it's not a Karma from Assassination Classroom. But... One does not simply go full Karma. No. <laughs> but I felt like it was something that... Um, Tyndall could pull off and something at least a little bit different than what I've seen of him recently. Um, what was your other prediction? Of course. <laughs> it's obviously it's obviously totally Eric Vale. No, it's Micah God. 
<laughs> yes, because Eric Vill can totally play that young of a character. <laughs> he plays no, Shinna. Well, <laughs> and he played Yuki. But when he played Yuki, this was like over a decade ago. <laughs> Stop reminding me that Fruits Basket's that old. I'm sorry, okay? Um, Zenith, because you at least see what they look like. Because I gave you pictures. I, I do have pictures. Do you have any inkling at all? Uh, hmm. Based on based on the description I gave you, based on those pictures. By the way, Narciss is like a shitty artist. Like he thinks he's the best artist in the world. By the way, but apparently he's not. Even though so far in the series, you never see a painting he's done. <laughs> by the way. Um. I'm gonna say for Narciss, I'm uh, like the the guy from Bleach who has the the sword that's a hangman noose. I don't even know that one because I stopped watching Bleach. God, after I haven't watched Bleach Soul in Society. All right, so in lieu of that, uh, Hisagi Shuhei is the other guy. So uh, don't I, I don't know who the voice actor is, but he's the guy with the 69 written on his cheek. Dude, Wikipedia. Oh God. My brain is not working. Um, <laughs> my brain can't remember anything. Because he looks kind of emo, and I'm going to give him the, the most emo characters in Bleach. You would. <laughs> but um, but that was who you were thinking for Narciss, yeah. anyway? Yeah. And um, what about Elam? Uh, the voice actor for Shippo from Inuyasha. Inuyasha? Oh, God. Uh, though it's very very highly unlikely i don't remember the name but i know who you're talking about in that case Cause, uh since because in you because technically in yasha was dubbed in canada okay well then so. instead of that how about uh voice actor for kazuma kuwabara oh god i know who that is too oh 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 isn't that sabbat actually is it from yu hakusha right yeah uh it might be chris sabbat Mm. Yeah, I think it's Sabbat. <laughs> you might have to... <laughs> Oh yeah, the answer to who plays the guy with the 69 on his face? Yeah. Oh, he's actually played by Steve Staley. Okay, I... No idea who that is. Uh, he did a good job. Steve but anyway, uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give Elam Kuwabara because... Even though he has a gravelly kind of voice, uh, his soft moments, he's he kind of tones that down. And I think if that voice were used a little bit toned down, that might work for that image of the character I kind of see. So you're telling me that you want Sabbath to play double duty here? Yes, yes, I do. No, no, I don't want him to play the king. I want him to play this bit character. <laughs> you know that's not going to happen though, right? <laughs> because I don't want him as much in the show as the rest. <laughs> just, just... Give me my money. Then why did you put him in that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway. Lilac, um, if you're wondering who else Steve Staley plays, have you ever watched Digimon? Yes. Is ever watched the, the fourth? Have you ever watched the fourth season? N for oh, wait, that's um. Frontier. I probably have. Oh, he's Koji in Frontier. Oh, yeah. He's also okay. Kadaj in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Don't know that one. He's a moon doggy in Erica Seven. I may remember that one, but I have to watch Erica Seven to get it. Okay, I, th I get it. I think I get an understanding now. But um, yeah. I think he's yeah, also he's... the blue-haired guy in Kill a Kill. Oh really? Uh, you you yeah. mean the analysis guy? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's him. Mm. I need to watch the dub. Cause I've only seen do it. It was awesome. Yes, it is him. Do okay. it. The dub was fucking awesome. <laughs> okay, but yeah. Those are predictions, at least for Narciss and Elam. Um, Give and Falangias. Um, Falangias is the one I couldn't find because I didn't know. Yep. I couldn't find a picture of her. Give, give, give. I have. Yeah, give is the douchebag with the guitar, right? Give is the douchebag musician who like flirts with ladies all day, every day. Um, Falangias. Um, she is a priestess in the capital. With Ooh. giant boobs. Yes. Who is, um, sent, who, because she doesn't pop in until, uh, episode eight or nine, and give only, like, one or two episodes before that. Um, 
she is tasked to find Arslan and serve him. So, because <laughs> the te I guess if I remember right, the temple that she um, is a priestess for was built in Arslan's name when he was born. So, there's that. Um, I had two for each, though. Granted, one of them from falling for fallen Gias is not happening. So, <laughs> um, for me, for Gieve, I put Todd Habercorn and Clifford Chapin in there. Uh, my my things for Dick with the guitar, <laughs> because I don't know his character, so I refuse to call him my name. And he looked like a douchebag with the guitar. <laughs> he pretty much is, actually. Oh, so p so picking Eric Vale was completely acceptable for this. Picking Eric Vale is acceptable for this. <laughs> I picked Eric Vale and Ian Sinclair. I think uh, <laughs> the main character from Beck Mongolian Chop Squad would be good for Geeve. Greg Ayers? Greg Ayers? Yeah. That's Greg Ayers, yeah. Yeah. That, I, I can see that, actually. Dick with the guitar. <laughs> My favorite thing is that in the Japanese, he's actually played by... The guy named, I think his name's like Ken or something, and the only other show I know him from that I've watched recently is Beyond the Boundary, in which he was like, and the my favorite line from that show is, would you stop putting audio porn in my ears? Nice. Um, personally, I kind of want to see Todd play Gee more than Clifford. Clifford was my second choice, only just to see something a little bit more different. Todd I put in there, kind of because Sword Online had happened, but... Also because Codebreaker happened, and the character he played in Codebreaker reminds me so much of Geeve. So I was like, okay, Todd, let's go. No, okay, because you brought up Sword Art Online, I have to do it. <laughs> you will address me at his as his lord, Todd fucking Haberhorn. I introduced Zenith to the bloopers yesterday, by the way. Zenith! Portuguese breakfast! Oh god, my, <laughs> my butt is still sore after all of that. <laughs> You can be the girl this time. I can be, and you can be the guy this time. Everyone is looking at your buns right now. I hope you know that. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um, and I'll have, a, and you'll have a crop in your ass. Oh, great. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I hate that show, but it has such glorious fucking bloopers. It does. It's fantastic. Um, Fallen Gears. Megan, you uh, you said you didn't have anything because it was the one you couldn't do. Um, but I now that two. I have a picture of her, I I might I'm, I'm gonna say Colleen Clinkenbear. Funny story. My I had two predictions. One of them is Colleen. The other one, who was my first choice, was Stephanie Young. But that's not happening. Colleen so Clinkenbear. So at this point, Colleen. Um, what do you what do, what do you think in Zenith? If you had to take a gander and a guess. Um. We're making you come up with shit on the fly. There you go. For her. I'm gonna say Rangiku. Back to the bleach wiki. Yeah, we, we it, it's the same person who did Mion and uh, and Higurashi no Nakakorni and stuff like that. I'm scared shitless of horror anime, so I probably <laughs> haven't watched it. I love my best my best friend fucking loves Higurashi and used to dress up as who's the one that has the big butcher knife with the orange hair. Oh God, I, it's been a while since I've seen it. Is it Reina? Yes, I think so. While we're figuring out who that is <laughs> that he's mentioning, um, yeah, I. Rangiku also has giant fucking boobs. That's that's where I went with that. <laughs> nice. Um, it <laughs> depends on which. It depends on what you're watching. If you're watching something called Bleach, the, oh, if you're playing the Bleach video games, or at least Soul Resurrection, it's Wendy Lee. If you're play, if you're watching just Bleach, and yes, I want to skip this ad. Um, it's Megan Hollandshed. Yeah, Megan Hollandshed is what I was talking about. Who is like, she's oh my god, she's my fucking Valentine. Everyone's your oh Valentine. My god. <laughs> uh, oh, she's also. Yeah. Wait, I'm trying to think of shit that we've all seen. Uh, she. Wow, she is in like a bunch of really weird shit. She's a bunch of people in the Sailor Moon dub from Viz. Um, she's Mion and Shion from when they from uh, Higarashi. Okay, makes sense. We went over this last podcast. I I announced her as Mion. Yeah, but but the big thing is that she's played somebody with giant tits. Yes, and that's why I had to compare. Anyway, this we've been talking anyway. very long. 
and we still have at least one more to make predictions on. Um, cause this dude's kind of a loner. Uh, Silver Mask is the last one to make predictions on, cause he does play a pretty good hand, um, with the Lusitania, uh, conquering shenanigans. Um, I had three predictions for this. <laughs> I'm Megan wrong X about one of them, because you. one of them I predicted to be Mike McFarland. And honestly, I would have been okay with that if it was him. Um, My other prediction was Chris Bevins, who's directing. It's possible he could be doing that, though. My three, in order of really want to, like, decent... Alex Organ. Yes, good. Because I want to see him do variety and different things, because he's kind of played the same character at this point. Chris Ryan, because I want to see him do things. Not Chris Rogers. <laughs> Not Chris Rogers. And just for, like, classic, slight, stereotypical, obvious choice thing, um, Robert McCollum is my third choice. But Is he an evil bag of dicks? Have Robert McCollum play him. Basically. But, personally, I'm just like, if Alex Oregon is Silver Mask, I will be happy. Because, again, I want to see more variety from him. Because Makashima and Dekum are fairly similar to each other, character and personality-wise. Togusa is a bit of the oddball one, but not too much of an oddball one, all things considered. So, I kind of want to see him go a little bit more angry and a little bit, little bit crazy. So, let's throw him in here. <laughs> Zenith? Yes? What are you thinking, my dear? <sighs> now, now that you see him. Tuxedo mask. Robbie? The Viz Media Sailor Moon? Yes. Robbie? It's like Robbie Damon or something like that. Mm. I know he was just at the con I was at too, and I didn't. That's like the one person's autograph I didn't get. Just yeah. just because. That's interesting. Just because. Because um. he wears a mask. <laughs> I mean. I love how he's basing his predictions. Or, well, unless it's the main character of Code Geass, but I haven't seen Code Geass. <laughs> Um, that was, so that was, saying, uh, that was Johnny Young Bosch. That's Bosch again. So you're talking... <laughs> We're back to Bosch. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, um, I'm sorry, guys. I don't really do a lot of research into uh, who voice acts unless I'm actually reviewing something. So the most I actually know is all of the One Piece people from the Japanese <laughs> side. We will make you learn. We will convert you to our cause. <laughs> this this has to happen because apparently will, I will know. <laughs> apparently I have Wait to watch second. high school isn't, DxD anyway. Isn't Micah isn't Micah in One Piece? Micah is the teenage version of Kobe. Yes. Yes. He's not the Kobe that starts out. If I remember right, that's Leah Clark. But um, teenage Kobe is Micah. Um, so anyway, because we 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 talk so much. Um, overall, in terms of impressions of those first couple of episodes or so. Episode one's kind of rough anyway, so... <laughs> I will we, give it a kinda... second chance, but I, I'm i not going to like it. Um, again, I feel that from episode two on, it kind of at least gets better, personally. Um, I have no idea. You need to actually watch the show. Uh, <laughs> now we can actually go watch the dub. Yay! Yeah, because you were you she you were like trying to stay away from it so bad. <laughs> just I'll probably so you watch it just after I finish catching up on shitty vampire kick to the FaceTime. <laughs> also known as Sarah. Oh. Also known as the destruction of Lilac. <laughs> oh my god. Also known as for some reason Jerry Jewel has a sniper rifle that shoots tigers. tigers. <laughs> I the tiger mean, rifle. But does it shoot really shurikens amazed. and lightning? No. Th He's got tigers. He's not tigers. fucking Arima. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, this was uh, something that I was not prepared for, and I know why Spaceman Hardy did not take this one on now. Yeah, Hardy yeah. backed out. Like a, Hardy was like, yep, I'm out. Bye-bye. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean... I don't even think he actually saw the show, too, to be honest. I, I have seen many anime in my day. <laughs> and a lot of it is mostly from, uh, you know, Toonami getting into it, and then, you know, me just picking and choosing random stuff. But these past two are, are something that I could not predict, because they're... They, they seem relatively obscure to me, and at the same time, 
they go in places that I was not expecting, especially the way they pace themselves and the way they introduce everything and the way right. they go about their dub. I'm used to things like Wolf's Reign and Cowboy Bebop and and One Piece and and uh, well, Kill a well, Kill. First of all, well, first of all, welcome to Funimation <laughs> oh. and Yu Yu Hakusho <laughs> and. Because cause the majority of the ones you just listed, Sans for One Piece and Yu Yu Hakusho, they are not Funimation. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've seen some good Funimation dubs, right. but Funimation, I mean, One one Piece ha- is a good dub, but I wouldn't call it superb uh, or better than the Japanese in many respects, mostly because it, it just doesn't have that kind of quality where... In mo- in a lot of cases, when you have a dub that's really, really good, like, Kill a Kill is pretty much on par sub and dub. They're equal. Uh, Funimation, I can't really say that about a lot of their work. That's interesting, because I tend to like a lot of dubs that they do, but I digress. Um, I would agree on the Kill a Kill point, but I haven't watched it in Japanese. Slash B, Erica Mendez's Ryuko is so fucking good. Um, but anyway, overall, my opinion is, as a broadcast dub, it's at least a decent start. Obviously, this isn't a final product. They're going to go back eventually and fix things. But, um, it's not bad. I think the only thing for me is, once again, it's going to take me a minute to get used to uh, Aaron Dismuke as the lead on this one. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think if they can fix his face, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh my god. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Jesus. This is weird. Um, so, if you are interested in catching the Heroic Legend of Arslan, um, both the simulcast as well as the broadcast dub comes out every Sunday morning. Um, and I believe Arslan is... you can For the simulcast, you can watch um, much of it for free. However, I believe it is the it is um, also the two. It's under a two week, um, two to three week elite subscri- subscriber wall. So either the latest two or three episodes are under the paid subscription. I don't know. I I, I tried to watch on Funimation's website, and it, it said you had to be subscribed to view that content. Well, well, hold on. I'm about to say the broadcast dub. On the other hand, you have to be an elite subscriber too. Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, if you're interested in trying out Elite Subscription for Funimation's site, there is a 14-day free trial, which you can use at your leisure if you so wish to do. Shameless plug. Um, shameless it is going to be very, very worth it for the news that I'm telling Lilac right after we get off of recording. Oh my god. Um, anyway, um, this episode has gone on long enough. Definitely long enough. Um, so... Zenith, I know we probably won't be seeing for a while. Because uh, as far as I know, we're not bringing you in any atten- and again anytime soon. <laughs> unfortunately. It's okay, I'll Hanging just be other- editing my one piece and and yelling at all of these actors yeah. for voice acting in this show. Your hours upon hours of editing. To- and Megan is... Megan's not really going anywhere. She's always going to be hiding somewhere. <laughs> I basically now work for Lilac. Basically, her and we're, Hardy. We're, the, we're like I'm like that guy now. Apparently, like, like, like me, me, Megan, and Hardy are like the three musketeers at this point. So, um, <laughs> God, no! What, what? On the uh, the other podcast I'm doing, I think we just did our top ten lamest powers in anime list. Finally, came out, even though it was supposed to come out a month ago, due to <laughs> editing problems. Uh, I think we have our top ten dads list coming out, which. Oh lord, I'm not gonna say anything more than that. Otherwise, I think the next review I have coming out is my God. I think it's my assassination classroom re- review I did for my group um, oh, is lord. being worked on right now by. Yeah, I can't actually edit because I am running out of room on my hard drive. <laughs> Whoops. As for so. as for me, I have two new history of One Piece episodes scheduled to come out in the next two weeks. Uh, I know you guys have been uh, well. If you've seen my show, most of the people who who watch it have been asking me to make the next episode for about a year now. So, there's two new episodes that I get the Final Fantasy 1 retrospective, which is about an hour and a half long, 
that'll be coming next, and then I'll go back to History of One Piece, because I have the buggy arc completely scripted. I'm going to record that uh, sometime this weekend, just slowly get up production speed. Uh, so if you like One Piece, come check it out, Zenith Rule Review on YouTube. Um, I also do video games and, and anime and so much, so much shameless plugging for you right there. Sid. Didn't you get? Didn't you get shamelessly plugged by somebody else, Zenith? Not yet. <laughs> and with that long-winded uh, attempt at a ending, this is the longest episode. More than likely, but we'll see how how it goes when I edit it down. Um, so yeah. Everyone say goodbye, because it's time to end this, because we talk for way too fucking long. <laughs> and it's time for me to go to bed. Good night. <laughs> Good um, night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> goodbye. Bye. Otaku on, guys. Goodbye. Have fun. Bye-bye.